Welcome to the first episode of Around the Globe Football Talk. Uh, I'm Matty, and uh, this is James. Say hello. Hello, hello, hello. Right. So, uh, th- this video is going to be on James's channel, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk about uh, what we're going to do. Um, so basically, we're going to do two episodes every week. We're going to do a talk. Uh, sorry, no, a Sunday edition. Come on. Where we where we talk about the uh, the fixtures and results um, from the weekend's games in the Premier League in the Championship uh, and elsewhere probably. And on Wednesday we're just going to talk about the news in the past week. Uh, so today's a Wednesday episode, and so we're going to be talking about news. But because this is our, is our is our first episode, we're going to be talking about the news. You know, uh, more than a week ago uh, because. You know, there's quite a few major stories that we'd like to talk about, so this is probably going to be one of our longest episodes if we uh, if we carry on with it. Uh, right. So, it. first uh, topic we're going to be doing is uh, about Benny as and the Chelsea saga that's going on. Right. So, <coughs> Rafa Benitez. Well, we'll start off with Di, Di Matteo getting sacked. Uh, yes. On the then left them on the brink of being knocked out of the Champions League. Um, well, what do you think? Do you think he should have been sacked or...? No, no. Not after winning what, he, what he's done for the club and the trophies that he's won. No chance. Yeah, definitely agree. I mean, in the course of something like nine months, uh, he was there. He's won two trophies, being the uh, the FA Cup and the the Champions League, the most the, the biggest trophy of them all when it comes to club football. And I just think that after f- six months or five months after winning that, you can't you can't be sacked. I mean, they're still competing for the league at this rate. They're not too much behind Manchester United, who are top right now, and Manchester City, which are within a point of United. And I just... Oh, yeah. It's terrible, really, because it, to bring Chelsea out from where Villas Boas had left them, which wasn't in a very good position... And then to go on and win the Champions League, and especially when they haven't even been knocked out yet. Juventus, if Juventus lose and Chelsea win, I think, then they can qualify. But, uh, yeah, Juventus have to go to Shakhtar, and Shakhtar won the group, so, you know, it yeah. might be a good game, that. But they're not out yet, so I, I definitely think they should have left him on. And even if they do get knocked out of the Champions League, I don't think he should have sacked him. No. Nope. Uh, Chelsea made an approach to Pep Guardiola uh, early in the yep. week before. Yeah, he didn't want to uh, yes. finish. But he don't want to return to work until 2013. Yep, uh, I was expecting that. Uh, so, Rafa Benito, keep it going. So yeah, on, the, on the Chelsea uh, website, they uh, left a statement saying uh, the owner and the board believe that Benitez will have will be a manager with signi- significant experience at the highest level of football who can come in and immediately help deliver the objectives. So um, now I'm going to talk about what happened at uh, Chelsea's last game, which was Rafa Benitez's first in charge of uh, his, his new club, Chelsea, which was a, a home game at Stamford Bridge to Manchester City. Uh, so, yeah, massive game for him. One of the biggest of the season concerning the, the Premier League. And it's, it's not an easy game, but um, if you look at the highlights, Chelsea had... Um, sorry, Manchester City had... Uh, more more chances really and I uh, don't think Chelsea were up to it and you could tell that when he first showed his face in the stadium uh, he was getting booed by Chelsea fans who in yeah. the past haven't yeah. liked him and, and you know the saying fans have long memories they, they still don't like him which you can understand 
He, he shoved them off though, hasn't he? He's not bothered about the boot. Yeah, he didn't really um, speak in his interview about the boots. Uh, he just just wants to get the job done, really. And he's yeah, only he's... an interim manager, isn't he? Yeah, he's more focused on the game. He we're not listening to the crowd. Yeah, well, James, is Benitez the man for the job? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a hard question. Sure. One game in, you can't really tell. You shouldn't have asked that, really. But, um, uh, I'd all, all, all Benitez is focused on is win, 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 win. And all yeah. the results can help. Definitely, there was, there was a load of uh, Chelsea fans with banner, banners um, saying, like, thanks, Di Matteo, and we want Di Matteo back, and uh, uh, Rafa Benitez out, Rafa out, stuff like that. But uh, do you think they'll, they'll be uh, showing those banners even after, like, a four or five game winning streak? I don't know, because... I'm not sure, because... Rafa said he can understand the rivalry in the past between Chelsea and Liverpool, but he's sure the majority of fans will understand he's a professional and he wants to do his job. Mm. So. Over, and we're going to move on to our second topic now, which is uh, the Joey Barton interview with the uh, French press. So, uh, I'm sure you've probably heard it, but for those who haven't heard it, uh, we'll, we'll play audio for you. Uh, yesterday I make one tackle and uh, all everybody speak about is this tackle. Nobody speaks about uh, the 50-yard pass that kills Balmon and, and it causes a red card for him. Um, and nobody sh- talks about the shot that um, Landru would have uh, been happy to, to see. You know, he didn't see the ball, never mind uh, have a chance to save it. So for me, it's important that people speak about uh, the qualities I bring as a footballer and uh, I'm a little bit bored, you know, from the English media and hopefully the French media is, have more about, has more about it than the, the English media and, and concentrate on uh, uh, li- stupid little uh, incidents like this. Maybe the one criticism of the French league is it's, it's a little bit uh, boring, you know, they... Yeah, and I, I can understand, you know, I watch uh, Lille yesterday, they have 10 men and they're happy to lose 1-0, uh, you know, they, they have 10 men and for me you might as well lose 5-0 as 1-0, you know, it's still no points. He's yeah. Argentine and I'm English, it's big difference, big, big difference. <laughs> right, so that was go <laughs> the Atlantic. quite funny. Uh, James, you start us off. What do you think? Uh, Joey Barton, he thinks he's too intelligent to be a footballer. So he's been watching that Allo Allo. That. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he made his debut for Marseille. And uh, in the match press conference in English, but he's used his a bizarre French accent and it sounds absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's a he's, he's a scouser and he's trying to pull off a French accent and it's made him sound like a bloody idiot. Well, well, they said like you know, usually if if you move to a team in a different country and you don't have the same languages, for example, if Joey Barton goes to France, right? If this was any other country who was better at learning languages than than England, then the whole team would would learn the languages or probably already know the lang- the English language. But Joey Barton knows, you know, probably like a couple of words now in French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, that just shows how behind we are as as Brits with other languages. Like it's amazing. How, like you go on holiday, you meet you meet like people the same age as you, you speak fluent English, and they're not even from your country. It's ridiculous. So anyway, um, his teammates, or most of them, can't speak English, but English and Scouse are two different things completely, and they can't understand Scouse, so, well, who can blame them? So he decided instead to try and cover up his Scouse accent with a French one, a poorly done French one. He's took tips from Steve McLaren. Yeah, Steve McLaren, we all remember that. 
back in Holland, who was he managing? FC Twenty, I think it was, where he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was. Uh, he was putting uh, the accent on, uh, as we say in Holland. Uh, uh, we all remember that interview. And so he's he's there's a modern day McLaren, and uh, absolutely hilarious and. Re- Joey Zabarton's Twitter. He uh, tweeted out, Steve McLaren, eat your heart out, with a link to of his interview. Got it yeah, he, he, he's done it completely on purpose, you know. I'm surprised he kept a straight th- face throughout it all and didn't just burst into laughter, but, you know, and it's just one of his plans to get in the press. He, he likes it, doesn't he? I mean... After that, he went on to justify his accent. He said, in my defence, it is very difficult to do a press conference in a scarf form full of French journalists. Well... The alternative is to speak like hello, hello character. It's yeah. simply a case of you have to be there. At the end of the day, though, he's, he's just doing it for attention. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, I think he's funny. Um... As a player, I don't know where I stand on it, but I think he's a funny guy. Right, shall we move on to the next topic? Yep, sure. Right, so we're going to move on to our next topic now, which is the the third topic, which is uh, Shakhtar player Luis Adriano's uh, his controversial goal against Nozioland, I hope I pronounced that right, um, Nozioland in the Champions League uh, last group fixtures. So, have you seen the goal, James? You've seen the goal, yeah? I've seen the goal. Uh, maybe we want to include a link in the description to like a video of the goal, but um, I'm, prob- I'm sure probably most of you have seen it already. Oh, yeah. So we'll we'll just break it down if you haven't. Do you want to uh, explain what happened, James? I'm I'm not quite sure if it was a Shakhtar player or a a, a New Zealand player. I think it was a Shakhtar player. Went down injured. In fact, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, so the ball uh, it was a drop ball situation. The referee dropped it, and Shakhtar player Willian. Uh, kicked it yeah, back it was. to Nozilan's keeper. Uh, so both the centre backs didn't move, thinking, right, it's going to run through to the keeper, right, no problem, fair play. And then Luis Adriano ran through, took the ball on, the keeper came out thinking, you know, what are you doing? Uh, and he took it round the keeper, who, you know, it was a half attempt, thinking he was round and yeah and, and scored and the goal counted and so yeah that was at, that was in Denmark I think it knows you in Denmark and tops it could in. be wrong but uh, I'm going to search that now but it was the game was at New Zealand's ground and uh, he got booed and then went on to score his hat trick as the game ended 5 uh, 2 to Shakhtar what do you think James uh, well, the refs has stopped play, and it's on a drop ball situation. It's considered good sportsmanship to give it back to the team who had the ball before play was stopped. Uh, a standard procedure, call, procedure calls for the opposing team to kick it to the red, to the uh, other team's keeper for a goal kick. But however, Adriano defied good sportsmanship by pouncing on the ball and scoring. So well, well I, don't, I, I think it's ruthless. Really there's a problem. I, the refs dropped the ball. It and I, I just looked it up. I can confirm Nozioland is a Danish team. Uh, so there we well, go. It, it, yeah, it's, it's not fair. Uh, now, do not look an idiot for not knowing, but uh, I, I know now. So, yeah, I said, 
Yeah, 5-2. Uh, Adriano scored his hat-trick. And uh, um, Jack Williams scored twice. So two. they probably would have lost anyway, but still. Uh, he's been given a, um, a a match ban, I think it was, by uh, by UEFA. Well, no, it was a it was a sh- it was a Shakhtar player that went down, wasn't it? Uh, ah, well, never mind. But uh, yeah, no, I think it was a Shakhtar. It was one of their players, weren't it? But oh. they had to kick the ball back to their keeper. So, well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he's been given a at least a one match ban, uh, and possibly a fine. I'm I'm not quite sure about that. But, uh, yeah, that means he misses uh, Shakhtar's game against Juventus in Ukraine. Um, well, I don't think it'll matter, really, if he's only got one, one match ban because Shakhtar are already through, and I don't expect him to play a full-strength team against Juventus. And, of course, that could, if Juventus win, cause Chelsea to crash out, like Manchester City, of the Champions League. Which um, will be our next topic. So, basically, the Norgeland player's gone down because of his elbow. And his teammate has stopped playing, kicked the ball out of play. So, since a Norgeland player has kicked the ball out of play, the ball goes to Shakhtar. But our, in terms of fair play, the Shakhtar player is supposed to respectfully return the ball to the Norgeland out of courtesy. But Adriano was supposed to let... He was supposed to let the Norgeland goalkeeper have the ball and not intercept it to score the goal, but... Hey, do you know? Yeah, so there you go. They could have, uh, they could have let Norgeland score one down their end as well. Because you uh, yeah. not sure they didn't yeah, do yeah. that. Did they? It's ruthless, really. And that game basically secured Shakhtar's place in the... Uh, is it the last 16? Uh, 32? Something like that. Yeah, anyway, the next round. Yeah, So, yeah. so topic now, which was, um, at the same time of this goal, uh, Manchester City crashing out of the Champions League for a second time in a row in the group stages. Aye. Uh, so, we probably all, all saw it. A massive game. Uh, Real Madrid travelled to Manchester to to play Manchester City. Yeah, it's the second year running that City have been booted out of the group stages. Yep, and... They need a victory to keep their hopes alive, make it to the final 16. Unlike their uh, their Manchester rivals, Manchester United, who secured their place in the next round uh, a week ago. So... Yeah, it was... uh, Benzema scored an early goal for... Madrid, yeah. but well equalised. A few calls from uh, City fans and City players that Benzema was offside, but replay show yep. definitely wasn't. The goal stood. And then uh, Alvaro Arbeloa um, picked up his second yellow of the match when he gave away a penalty, which Sergio Aguero calmly put past Casillas. Uh, now, I don't know if you've seen the red card, James, but... Um, have you? Uh, no, I haven't actually. No. I'll just give my take on it. I, I don't know, really. Alva, uh, Arbeloa just kind of stumbled. I'm I'm not sure if he touched Aguero. He might have stumbled and clipped his heel by accident, but I don't think it was a red card. Well, I don't think it was a second yellow. Was it a penalty? Yeah, probably, but it doesn't matter really. They're out of the Champions League. Yep. And at the end of the day... The, the Mancini's three-man defensive system was basically exploited yeah. by Madrid. You know, why but change finally, something? City got into the game and alterations yeah. were made after the break. But Why change something? And that's not he's back for. All of, all of uh, last season, you know, solid... They are uh, definitely the team to beat last season uh, until it came to the end of the season where they, they stumbled a bit but they picked themselves back up and then um, put some exploited some Manchester United mistakes and, and won the league in the end. 
So, yeah. you know, if the defence is solid, like it was last season, why why put back three on? Doesn't make sense, oh, really. Sure. And al- also, um, David Platt has picked up a two-game touchline ban uh, for things he said at that game. Not quite sure what it was. It's quite recent in the in the news, which means he'll miss um, he'll w- miss the last Champions League group fixture of Manchester City's where they travel to uh, to Borussia Dortmund in Germany. Yeah. Uh, which uh, you know it, they've uh, only got three points from five games, so they can't have no complaints about making an early exit. Another tough group for Manchester City. <laughs> Yep. Another year. Uh, Celt- Celtic are doing all right in the Champions League. They are. That, not, uh, not in their own league, though. Yeah. That yeah, uh, win over Barcelona. Yeah, definitely. They're keeping some. That's a win for them. Fraser Forster, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should we move on? Uh, yeah, why not? Right. Right, and our last topic, and debatably the best, um, is Philippe Mexes' goal for AC Milan in the Champions League uh, against Anderlecht. I think it was yep. at Anderlecht. Um, yeah, quite the spectacular. Some, some special goal. Even, even though what happened, uh, you, Sweden against England... Oh yes, we all re- we've all seen Eber. that. Well, this over a kick was still something special. It, it was they were already uh, two nil, uh, one nil up. Yeah. They needed it in the end because Ander like what, got one back, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then, well, Pato El Shirawi. It's an incredible goal. Scored first. Absolutely. Now, now, what everyone's been talking about. Is as soon as it was scored, <coughs> uh, Ibra's goal, Ibrahimovic's goal, or Mexes's goal. Now, I, 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 me, I've got to say Mexes. Okay. He, it looked like he's looked like he's meant to do it. And I, I know Ibrahimovic was meant to do that, but I've got to say Ibrahimovic was a bit potluck. Yeah, well, uh, nine out of ten chances that Oliver at the bar gone wide, post keeper saved it or defender cleared it. Well, do you want to hear my my decision on this? Yeah, I, I've got to say Ibrahimovic's goal for me definitely because if if you look uh, at the goal. Uh, the ball was delivered to to the far side of the box. I'm, I'll take nothing away from Philippe Mex. Says he's centre half and he's thirty now, and that was spectacular. But it's got to be Ibrahimovic is from for me because, well, Mex says saw the goal. He looked at the goal. Uh, Mex says took it on under control. Uh, Ibra didn't see see the goal. He didn't look over his shoulder. He just ran straight to the ball, hit it first time, didn't have it under control, hit it first time. Now, you may debate that uh, there was a keeper in net for Mexes' goal, but the keeper didn't move, and uh, there wasn't a keeper in net. It went straight over Joe Hart, but I reckon if that ball had, had gone anywhere else in that net, Ryan Shawcross might have had a chance at clearing it off the line, and he nearly did. And it yeah, and it was yeah, right in the well, corner, yeah. right in the corner. Yeah, and the, the, the way coming from the way he spun his body when he did it was amazing. Yeah, well, I'll, to be honest, I think they're both cracking goals. Definitely, definitely, I agree with you on that. But uh, you you make your minds up for yourselves. So, yeah, yeah. right, I'll put we... a uh, link in the description to. Both incidents that have happened. Well, three. Joey Barton, Ibrahimovic, and Nexus goal. Yep. And then. Uh, but yeah. Chapter. Yeah. Right, so so we've come to the end of our first ever episode. Uh, quite a long, long book. You know, we've done more than a week's news. 
Rolling and uh, we hope you liked it anyway, nevertheless. So, our next episode will be uh, this Sunday, where we're going to talk about the results from uh, Saturday and uh, what, what the tables are looking like in the Premier League and Championship. Uh, so, well, cheers everyone for watching. What have you got on this part? But, uh, cheers anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, see ya, goodbye.